Hello, here I am with my monthly look at the previews catalog from Diamond Comics Distribution. This one's from November 2023. Um, so I'll jump into it. So first in the DC booklet. JLA Book One, uh, that's the Grant Morrison JLA, collects mm, one through nine and a bunch of other stuff, 600 plus pages. Um, I personally can't stand this version of JLA. Um, I was reading mainstream comics when this came out. I was very, very excited for it, um, and, uh, and I just did not enjoy it after about a year I gave up on it um, so but I know it's beloved by a lot of people thought I would highlight it here um, looks like it's being put out now in a series of thick paperbacks a version of Justice League I did enjoy Justice League International Omnibus Volume 3 this I believe is going to be the last one collecting the Keith Giffen J.M. DeMattius and Kevin McGuire et al. Uh, team, the uh, the funny Justice League. This one runs through uh, Justice League of America 60 and Europe 36 and then has some extra stuff. So anyway, I'm very surprised this actually happened and I'm glad it happened. Um, also, I could have sworn I talked about this just recently, a few months ago. Superman, The Silver Age Omnibus, Volume 1. Um, kind of a hefty price tag for these, but these are interesting, goofy comics. Um, and, uh, thought I would highlight them. From Marvel, um, Marvel had a bunch of stuff that... you know, sort of caught my eye for being odd, but there was only one thing that I thought I would actually want. Um, I don't think I'll actually buy it, but it, one thing I'd actually want. Captain America by Mark Grunewald, Omnibus. I was a young teenager, um, probably about maybe two-thirds of the way through Grunewald's run. I was reading Captain America. It was my favorite comic when I was 13. Um, really loved it. Um, I've always kind of wanted this whole run and never bothered to collect it. Um, and at this point I don't know that I ever will. But anyway, Grunewald had a long run, went through a lot of phases. He wrote Captain America longer than any other writer. And, uh, kind of, uh, interesting to me they're, they're actually collecting it under his name. So, anyway, thought I'd point that out. Um. In the main previews, as usual, I go quite a ways before I find something. All right. So, um, Image has this new sub imprint. I don't even know what you would call it. Ghost Machine. This is Ghost Machine one shot. Uh, Jeff Johns. Who else is on this thing? Gary Frank, Brian Hitch, Brad Meltzer. Honestly, a bunch of names I don't really care about. Don't really care about these comics. Somehow, these guys got covered in the New York Times recently about how it was this major deal that creators were going to own a comic company. As um, they're, they're being published by Image, who did this 30 years ago. So, anyway, because it was a big news item, I thought I would point it out. Um... I doubt they're going to produce many comics that I would give a rat's ass about, but I thought I'd mention it. Um, Packless Number Zero by Dustin Weaver. Um, anyway, one man anthology series. Um, I think there's been six issues of this, and now there's a zero. I'm not really sure why. Um, thought I'd mention it though. Sort of an oddity from. For mainstream comics for this sort of thing to exist. Um, 
next from Ablaze Comics. This uh, caught my eye. Kalavala, the graphic novel, um, adapted by Sami Mokanen. I'm probably butchering that um, pronunciation. Um, I looked in the description to see if I could uh, figure out what country this is from. I'm not really sure. To me, it looks like it might be Finnish, Icelandic, um, something Scandinavian. Allegedly, it was a um, an inspiration for J.R.R. Tolkien to do Lord of the Rings. So, anyway, something that's uh, maybe worth checking out. Um, Ablaze has a halfway decent track record of having interesting books. From Dark Horse. This is a re-solicit, but I'll figure I'll mention it again. Empowered, Volume 12 by Adam Warren. Um, yeah, I don't know. You either like Adam Warren comics or you don't. Wouldn't blame someone for not caring for them, but I really like his art. And um, his comics are pretty fun. Uh, Grew in the Wild trade paperback. Uh, the miniseries is still ongoing. Um, I think issue three just came out. Um, but yeah, so there's going to be a trade of that. Um, I'm always interested in highlighting Gru, even if we may be in the um, the end days of any Gru interest. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Usagi Ojimbo Where Win trade paperback by Stan Sakai. I'm a Stan Sakai guy, um, so I'm there anytime he's doing anything. Um, don't know anything about the series. Don't really need to know anything about it. I'll, I'll be picking it up. Um, down below, uh, In Utero. That's a new graphic novel from Chris Gooch. Um... I believe he is, I'm going to say Australian and hope that I'm not picking the wrong country. Um, he has two or three other graphic novels that have been published by Top Shelf, I believe, um, that I have enjoyed. And so I'm looking forward to seeing a new book by him. Um, I saw this on social media, on the old blue sky. Uh, Nat Gertler, his company, About Comics, is back in the previews catalog for the first time in a decade. Um, here with a couple different books. Scott Shaw's Comics and Stories, about fandom, underground culture, the comics industry, talking animals, a gonzo cartoonist, and other stuff. So yeah, Scott Shaw has been a working cartoonist forever. Um, I believe he was the artist on Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew from DC back in the 80s. Um, lots of fan stuff, um, but he's just a name that I've seen forever. Not, I don't have the affection for him that I do for Fred Himbeck, but um, I think of them in similar ways. Um, so no idea what this book is about, um, what it's going to be like, no idea. The other book I am familiar with, The Jam, Urban Adventure Beginnings. Um, this is a collection of The Jam by uh, Bernie Moreau. Uh, this is the original five-issue storyline. Um, says first time collected. I'm not sure if that's true, but I believe it could be true. I'm not sure if this was the series that came out from Tundra or something else, but um, anyway, The Jam's fun, a fun uh, sort of Canadian classic. Um, glad to see it coming back into print. Here's another book I know I mentioned many months ago. Archer and Armstrong. Valiant Classics. Archer and Armstrong. Uh, volume 1. This collects all the Barry Windsor Smith material, which is the only reason I would bother to point it out. Also, because I notice all the Valiant stuff is up in the front of the alphabet, and that's because... They're published by Alien Books. Don't know about Alien Books, but apparently they own Valiant now. Um, no idea. If anyone knows, let me know. Um, I don't really care that much, but mildly curious about what's going on there. 
Um, I noticed when I flipped the page, there was a whole bunch of other alien books. And I ordered this Sunshine Patriots uh, Howard Chaikin book. Um, all the rest of it I'm not really familiar with. But anyway, so um, another deep-pocketed publisher that won't sell any comics? Who knows? Um, Avatar. Apparently they still exist. And they only pop up here and there just to have sales. And here's another sale. Uh, they're $5.99 graphic novel collections. Um, so if you're somehow a fan of Crossed, you can get all those for $5.99. Uber will point out Crossed plus 100 is written by Alan Moore. So um, there you go. Ferals, which is a David Laffham series. Um, bunch of Garth Ennis, bunch of um, Warren Ellis. Uh, more David Laffham, Dan the Unharmable. Yeah. So, there you go. A whole bunch of this stuff. Lots of Innes and Ellis, if you happen to be a fan of them, though. And then the occasional Alan Moore cash-in. Um, so, yeah. Not going to recommend anything in particular, but... Thought I would point it out, because they are a pretty good deal. AWA Upshot, um, a publisher I don't have much interest in. They make a bunch of slick-looking comics that are clearly intended to be movie pitches, um, IP farming. This is uh, Sins of the Salton Sea, uh, which calls to mind a, a Hugo Pratt book, um, written by Ed Brisson. I've, I've read a couple things by Brisson. I enjoyed all right. Um... So, not saying pick this up, not saying I'm going to pick this up, but I think Ed Briston's okay. I'm a, I'm a crime noir guy, um, so I might give it a shot, but uh, I haven't been too impressed with much that AWA has done. Um, and outside of the Peter Milligan stuff they published, I'm not really, haven't paid too much attention. Um, this was uh, interesting to me. D.C. Thompson, which is one of the long, long, long standing British publishers of comics. Um, this is Commando Presents Volume 1, Commandos vs. Zombies. Um, it's seven, they're 7 by 10, so it's comic sized. Commando, I have one or two of these. They're little digest size, black and white um, war comics. And so I don't know if DC Thompson's now going to try to start getting some of these published the way Rebellion has been getting a lot of their old stuff um, in print. I don't know. Maybe they've been doing it. This is the first time I've noticed. But it jumped out at me. Thought I would mention it. Um, let's see. Fanographics. How War Begins, Dispatches from the Ukrainian Invasion. Uh, this is a new graphic novel by, um, I think it's Igert, um, who is an Italian cartoonist, wonderful cartoonist. And this is his um, book about the Russian invasion of, the Ukra of Ukraine. Um, I've been able to take an early look at this book. Um, I'm very interested in... Um, it's pretty text heavy. I should I should warn any potential readers, but um, he's a great cartoonist, and I'm sure the book's going to be a hell of a read, and also probably a bit of a harrowing read. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, Fat Cop by Johnny Ryan. Um, Johnny Ryan returns to his lowbrow roots. Um, need we say more? I, you know, I run hot and cold on Johnny Ryan. Sometimes I think he's very funny. Sometimes I'm just not particularly interested. So I will see what that looks like. Um, Hypericum? Hypericum? Not sure how that's pronounced. By Manuel Fior. Um, I'm a fan of Fior's comics. I think Fanta has published five books by him now. Um, I've enjoyed all of them to varying degrees. Uh, here's four of them down below. 
uh, Celestia, Red, Ultramarine, Blackbird Days, and The Interview. Um, yeah, the other one is, I think, 3,000 3, miles per hour or miles per second, something like that. Um, anyway, interesting cartoonist. I, I enjoy his work. Looking forward to a new book. Um, this is an oddity. Uh, my friend Ray pointed this out to me. Uh, Shell Collection by Ron Rigi Jr. Um, I'm familiar with Ron Rigi. He's been around for a very long time. But this is a compendium of comics and drawings from the first 75 issues of Ron Rigi Jr.'s mini comic series. The Shell of the Self of the Senses. So apparently he does this monthly subscription-only series, around a hundred or so copies published month to month. Um, and so, yeah, here's a collection of some of the highlights from that. Um, first, I'd ever heard that this series existed. I had no idea, and pretty interested to see what this collection looks like. No idea. Um... From Floating World Comics, Monster Fan Club number two, uh, written by Jason T. Miles, formerly of Seattle, now in Portland, uh, cartoonist, um, but art by Shaky Kane, which is a hell of a coup by Floating World, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, don't know. I think it's a three issue series, I believe. Um, so I haven't even seen number one yet. But I am intrigued. Uh, Living the Line Publishing. This book, uh, Tiku, uh, T I H K U. Um, this is a joint work by 12 artists in the first part in a series. And it's apparently from an association and collective of about 60 contemporary comic artists living in Finland. Um, so that, uh, intrigued me, um, kind of curious what that's about. It could be a colossal mess and totally uninteresting, but, um, I'm astounded there are 60 cartoonists in Finland. So, um, very curious about it. That's for sure. I will say for living the line, they, um, even when they're publishing books, I don't particularly care about, they seem to publish pretty interesting books. Um, and, uh, they definitely put thought into what they're publishing. Um, from MBM, here's a new printing of Rohan at the Louvre by Hirohiko Araki. Um, they've published a bunch of these Louvre-related books. Um, I have a couple of them. Uh, primarily I have the, the Euro Taniguchi book. Um, and a friend of mine just showed me a book called Leonardo 2, which was a giant, huge hardcover, um, with some pretty great art. And it was part of this Louvre series. This is <clears throat> obviously a, a mangaka. Um, and somehow the Louvre is involved. And um, behind the scenes, the Louvre is involved, I believe, financially. So... Interesting series. Um, each book is completely different from the others. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so anyway, thought I'd point that out. Scott Pilgrim. It's still around. Um, this is a new uh, little slipcase of the soft covers. The reason I'm pointing this out again, though, is because my friend Alex told me that there was going to be a deluxe hardcover edition that was going to be 300 something dollars. Um, that kind of blew my mind. Um, apparently there's a Netflix animated series coming. Um, anyway, this to me represents such a moment in time in comics that I'm, I'm surprised at the life it's had. Um, but yeah, anyway, Scott Pilgrim still around. You can still get it. Um, from Rebellion, 2000 AD. So, this one's new, I believe. The Crimson Sea War Picture Library. Um, and these are offered again. Battle of Britain, Night of the Devil, 
battle stations. The reason I'm mentioning is because three of these have art by Hugo Pratt, uh, a young Hugo Pratt, pre-Corto Maltese. Um, I've never seen any of these, so I have no idea what they look like. I have no idea if they're any good or if it's just raw, youthful work. Um, I'm very curious, though. So, um, anyway, not sure how to change, um, you know, not sure where to see them, frankly, and I'm not sure they're worth uh, tracking down. Um, this is a resolicit from a former previews, um, The Rise and Fall of the Trigon Empire, Volume 5. Um, Don Lawrence's beautiful art is the reason to pay attention to this series. I had a Trigon Empire collection when I was young, and so it's firmly lodged in my brain as a formative comic, and that's why I've been interested in these. But uh, anyway, it's a classic of British comics. Um, speaking of classic comics from Tomorrow's Back Issue Magazine hits 150 issues. Um, I do not pick up every issue of Back Issue, but I, I've gotten a few over the years. Um, it's a solid fan-centered magazine. Um, yeah, it does its job, but uh, 150 issues is quite an achievement. Um, also, here's a new book from Tomorrow's. It Rose from the Tomb, the 20th Century's Best Horror Comics. So, um, I'm not sure. I think this is an actual... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is an anthology or if it's a book. I assumed it was a book about horror comics. A genre that I don't particularly care for, but I will admit there are a lot of great comics, a lot of great artists. Um, they're mentioning here Frazetta, Neil Adams, Mike Kaluta, Steve Ditko, Matt Fox, Warren Kremer, Lee Elias, Lee Elias, sorry, Bill Everett, Russ Heath. So, um, anyway, these two Morrow's books are, uh, can be very fun and you never know which ones are going to go out of print and become grotesquely expensive. Um, so... The other ones hang around and you can get them for the rest of your life. Uh, for manga, there were only a couple for me. Tokyo These Days um, by Teo Matsumoto. Um, the guy who did uh, Tech on King Crete. Also, Cats of the Louvre, which I believe is another one of those Louvre books. Could be wrong. Um... So anyway, new Matsumoto book. A lot of people really revere this guy. I'm, you know, I think he's all right. Um, but uh, definitely worth highlighting when he has something new out. And the last thing is um, Mao, Volume 15 by Rumiko Takahashi. Um, I'm still picking these up. I'm still following him along. So, um no idea how many more volumes are going to be. So, anyway, another fairly light month from the previews. Um, still with some good books, some quality books, but a pretty light month overall. So, if uh, you think I missed something, if you uh, have something to say about something I did say, let me know. And uh, I'll talk to you later.